Hey, what's going on, Guardians? TBL here, and there has been quite a lot of talk about this week's Nightfall Strike. It is the Strike Exodus Crash, and you know, whether or not it's a good strike, uh, whether or not the Nightfall is fun, and let's just say there's been quite a bit of consternation about, uh, about the absolute difficulty of this week's Nightfall, and of course the, the glitches and whatnot going on with the prestige version of this week's Nightfall. I actually think most of the strike is structurally fine, and that it's really just the final boss fight, that final encounter where things go off the deep end. Uh, overall in Destiny 2, Exodus Crash is my least favorite strike in the game. It's the one that I have the least amount of fun with. Uh, essentially, I consider it to be the Wretched Eye Strike of Destiny 2. Now, the Nightfall's modifiers this week can definitely make this a little bit difficult. With Attrition, you've basically uh, got exposure on so that you're not going to be restoring health or your shields unless you kill enemies and pick up a specific item that they drop. And of course, with Time Warp Anomalies, it's going to spawn these blue oracles across the map that you destroy. It gives you an extra 30 seconds on the clock so that you don't run out that Nightfall timer too quickly. Thankfully, these oracles, uh, they're fairly easy to spot. So as long as you're keeping an eye out while you're moving forward, it shouldn't be too hard to find them all and get yourself some extra time on the clock. The section after that is a classic Destiny uh, Protect the Ghost While He Does a Thing session. But overall, this is a pretty standard section where you just sit back, it's a wave defense thing. You just kill things, bl blow up all the majors, and then you're done. Now, of course, the Nightfall version of this is very difficult because a lot of the enemies are super strong, they're super duper tanky, especially the overcharged shanks. I feel like those things have a little bit too much health in the Nightfall. It takes like four or five shots with a scout rifle to take them down, which might not seem bad to you right now, but when you get into some of the craziness that happens later in this strike, you'll understand why you want to be able to take those things out as quickly as possible. Well, you might just have to rely on heavy weapons to take down the overcharged shanks. But once the wave defense section is done, you'll have another section with arc charges, and then you'll need to destroy a fallen spider tank. After that, the final section will be a darkened room with some sneaky fallen that you'll need to just scale up before you reach the final boss arena. So, if I think most of the strike is fine, why is this my least favorite strike in the game? Well, it's rather simple. I think this final boss is probably one of the most frustratingly designed encounters in Destiny 2, and definitely the worst strike boss in Destiny 2. And here are my reasons for that. The boss of this strike is Thavnix the Depraved. He's a giant vandal who's really, really fond of stealth tech. But unfortunately, he's not very fond of sticking around, because once you deal about 5-10% to damage to him, he has a rather sneaky habit of just disappearing and dipping out. Now, this mechanic all by itself is not bad. As a matter of fact, it's something we've seen plenty of times with uh, Destiny bosses throughout the years. The idea of health gating a boss that he proceeds through phases is certainly nothing new, but when you mix it in with some of the other things going on in this encounter, it makes it really frustrating for this boss. So you deal a certain percentage of damage to his health, he disappears and leaves the battlefield while enemies spawn and move in. That's pretty simple, that's pretty standard. After you've killed some enemies or after some time has passed, he'll respawn somewhere on the battlefield, usually right behind you, and then get back into the fight. Now, overall, I feel like Bungie was going for something similar to the a la cool Dark Blade strike, where you have a boss who takes a set amount of damage, staggers, disappears, and then is back in the fight in like 10 seconds. That's not the case with Thavix. A lot of the time, especially in the Nightfall, he seemed to disappear for an inconsistent amount of time. And of course, during that time, you just have to sit back and kill ads until he comes back. This is fine on a normal strike, but when you're on a timed strike, uh, it doesn't really work so well when your boss takes a set amount of damage, leaves, and then comes back in 10 to 20 seconds at some points. That's a lot of time to lose for something that's not really your fault. And just the sheer amount of times it happens over the course of the fight is really kind of ridiculous. Uh, during one of the times I was doing this strike, I counted at least 10 times when he disappeared and took some time before he came back. And that's a lot of time lost when you're running this thing. And it kind of brings it to the point where you almost feel like there's a missing mechanic there. Like, I think it's one of the reasons why people were so excited when they found out about the cheese of finding him crawling on the walls and then shooting him off, because it feels like, oh, that's what you're supposed to do. When he goes invisible, maybe he jumps on the walls and you can damage him there to make him come back to the battlefield sooner. But no, it turns out that might actually just be a glitch, and this is the way the fight is supposed to be done. 
And, you know, that kind of sucks because that would have been nice. It would have been great if that's the mechanic. When he disappears, you just have to find wherever he's hanging out on the walls or something, pop him a couple times there. Maybe it stuns him for a bit so you can deal some damage to him, and then he jumps back into the fight. But no, you just kind of have to wait for him to decide he wants to come back. And in a timed encounter, it just makes for a frustrating overall experience. Now, it's not just the mechanics with Thavix himself that uh, I feel are the problem with this encounter. Of course, we also have those overcharged shanks who spawn all across the battlefield. They move to each of the platforms, and then if they're sitting on it, they overcharge that platform. And if you're standing on it, you can't sprint, you can't jump. It completely inhibits your movement. Now, on a normal strike, again, these just take two, maybe three shots to drop. But on the Nightfall, they are surprisingly tanky. It takes forever to drop them. And on this week's Nightfall, when you've got attrition up so nobody's healing, if you get caught away from your team or maybe away from some ads and an overcharged shank pops up on your platform, it can make for an absolute nightmare experience of you not being able to sprint away, taking constant damage from standing on the floor and ugh, just not being able to heal. Hopefully you guys are warlocks running your rifts or devour builds for this. A lot of people are talking about the timer on the Nightfall, that they don't like it, it's artificial difficulty, and that it's the real problem with this strike, and I don't think that's the case. I don't really have too much of a problem with the Nightfall timer. It can be frustrating, but it really kind of exemplifies the issues with an encounter, and that's certainly the case for this strike. I know a lot of you Guardians out there really dislike the Nightfall Timer, and I agree, it is an artificial way to bump up the difficulty of a strike, but I don't think it's the overall root of the problem, at least with Exodus Crash. I think the overall problems with this strike, or really just this encounter, are with the boss mechanics themselves. I really feel like there should be some way to cause Thavix to come back sooner. Or not have him leave at all, just have him warp to some other part of the battlefield while invisible. After all, I get the feeling that the design purpose of this strike was to have you moving around constantly. I really feel like that's, that's what Bungie wanted. They wanted you to be moving from platform to platform rather than sitting in a single spot. And that's why they utilized the overcharge shanks to try to, you know, keep you off of specific zones. I also feel like the overcharge shanks, the boxes that spawn them, I, I really wish you could destroy them to kind of prevent extra shanks from spawning. I don't know, clearly I'm I'm not a game designer, I'm just talking about some things that I feel would make this specific encounter a bit less frustrating for players. But anyways, Guardians, that's pretty much it for my rant. Again, thanks for listening. I just wanted to take some time to talk about the Exodus Crash Strike in and of itself. Um, most of the strike is fine. It's just that final boss encounter I feel has some really fundamental issues, uh, specifically with Thavix himself being health-gated and then being on a timer before he comes back and there being no way to just kind of force him back or damage him while he's off running from you. I, I just think it already makes for an unfun strike boss. When you add on Nightfall modifiers, it really makes it apparent. Who knows, maybe actually having Prism on would have made this a lot easier to deal with. But alright Guardians, that's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to let me know what you Guardians think of the Exodus Crash Strike in this week's Nightfall and Prestige Nightfall down in the comment section below. Did you guys beat the Nightfall or the Prestige? If you beat the Prestige, give yourself a round of applause. That feels like it's nearly impossible right now. But anyways, I'm out for now. Thanks so much for watching. As always, I am the Black Link. You Guardians, stay frosty.